Ah, and we are live. Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We got a great show for you today. As always, we are live every single day at noon Eastern. If you want to watch live, head over to twitch.tv slash Takes by Fans. If you want to watch but not live, head over to our YouTube channel, Takes by Fans. We post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis. And if you just want to listen, we are on podcasting apps, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. So, however you want to watch or listen, we've got you covered multiple ways. Alrighty, today is a big all Monday, folks, and we've got the finale of March Madness tipping off today, tonight, which uh, I'm not seeing a lot of uh, kind of hype about. I'm a little interested in that. Uh, you know, woke up today, checked all the social medias, Twitter, the daily basis things, and nobody's really talking about March Madness today. I don't think if you, you know, if you're not like a huge college basketball fan, March Madness fan, if you don't got any kind of, you know, your bracket's already busted, you've got no kind of stake money left in March Madness, you may even think there's no March Madness today. Like maybe it's next week, next Monday's the final day, but no, 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 it's tonight, folks. We crown March Madness, Kansas or UNC winner tonight, but really no buzz about it, at least from what I'm seeing. Maybe y'all got something different, but I, I'm not seeing a lot of hype around it. Maybe because Duke's out, everybody lose a lot of hype because of Duke. I don't know. But uh, I guess we'll quickly talk about it. Maybe see what the spread is. Maybe take it. Maybe take it, see what it's about. Uh, so, yeah, March Madness tonight. It ends tonight. We crown a winner tonight, but it seems like nobody's talking about it. A little interesting. Uh, but today on the show, folks, we finally, finally, thank goodness, folks, and it was stressing us out, but we finally did the dirty work, <laughs> dirty work yesterday on the show, clearing our backlog catalog of NFL stories to talk about, folks. There was like 30, 35, 50, maybe even 50. There may have been 50 stories yesterday that we quickly ran through. Jeez Louise. Uh, but we're good. We're done with the backlog of stories. We can move on to bigger and better and brighter things like watching Malik Willis. Uh, 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 does that sound good to y'all? Do we watch a draft prospect today? Do we break down a draft prospect today, folks? Does that sound good to y'all? Because sounding good to me. So finally going to be watching Malik Willis today, breaking it out, down his stats, watching him at the uh, combine, seeing what he did all last season. What are those highlights? What is he showing us? And we know quarterback's not going to be like a, a key pick in this year's draft. This is not like last year's draft where all these teams need quarterbacks and there's like four or five, maybe even six great quarterbacks entering the league last season through the draft. No, no, no. There's like really Malik Willis, maybe uh, Kenny Pickett, I believe that man's name is. And there's really not that many teams that need quarterbacks. If you needed a quarterback this season, you kind of traded for a good one already, an established good one already. Already. So these teams that are kind of quote unquote playing the waiting game, I'm looking at you, Carolina Panthers. Hey, you're going to have to pick Kenny Pickett or Malik Willis. That's going to be their kind of big decision, which quarterback's better. So we're going to be trying to figure out that equation, which quarterback of the two that are kind of premiered, promoted, billed as the best quarterbacks from this year's draft class, which one's better, which one should a team take, and is the team going to be making the right decision choosing the quarterback that they chose, yes? So we'll start breaking down those quarterbacks today with Malik Willis. Got to break down the NBA from last night. Bet on the NBA tonight as well today on the show. Uh, uh, Re-updating our power rankings. A little bit of an upgrade here. We're going to go a little bit of update madness in our power rankings over the next kind of uh, eight, nine days here. The rest of the regular season. We're cutting our list down from t uh, 12 to 10 today. A lot of movement. We got some new teams in, which we absolutely love. And we have kicked some teams out. We're not playing. Everything's kind of worth like double points. The home stretch final stretch still play off positioning seeds to be had so go out and get those better positions those easier first round opponents home court advantage for as long as you can get it go out and get it so we will be updating our power rankings pretty frequently i don't think we'll do two days i think we're going to do every three days so we'll come back potentially on Thursday, re-update them again, then do it on maybe Sunday, re-update them again, and all that, and also potentially knocking off some spots as well every time we update our power rankings. So, 
We've got that today as well on the show, and then breaking down some more NFL stories because y'all know they never stop running in, coming in, breaking news, 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 breaking news, regular news, not breaking news, who cares news, we talk about it all here, and we do have a couple of stories to break down. So let's kick it off here, let's start with March Madness, then we'll transition to the NBA, then we'll transition again to the NFL, so let's once again, well let's again, uh, preview tonight's matchup because once again, I mean, I-, I can show you the timeline on Twitter. Nobody is hyping up this uh, March Madness Finals. Here we- I mean, folks, how long do I have to go back? I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Everyone's still talking about LeBron. They're still talking about LeBron and the Lakers, and they're the 11th seed, two games behind the 10th seed to get in the playing tournament, and that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about, are the Lakers going to get into the playoffs? A, no, they won't, and uh, yeah, they're, they're not going to, and this is how we have to, uh, 37 minutes ago. North Carolina faces Kansas tonight for the national championship. It took us 37 minutes ago, and that's only one post. One post. But you also want to talk about LeBron. Can we stop it? Can we stop with the Lakers? They're done. They're cooked. We know they're done. We know they're cooked. Can we move on? Some new teams. And even even Skip Bayless, once again, another big news story, another big topic on the debate shows today was that Skip Bayless is still scared of the Nets. He still doesn't want to face the Nets in the playoffs. I mean, this is what we're still talking about, folks. Still talking about. Instead of talking about... Uh, the Hawks who are emerging, they're going to be cracking the top 10 in our power rankings. Shout out to the Hawks. The Heat finally getting it together and doing exactly what we've been preaching all year long. Folks, we'll talk about that. We'll get in depth, folks. Y'all know, y'all will know what we are talking about in a minute. But I mean, this is what we're talking about. Here we go. An hour ago from Sports Center, the clash of the blue bloods. There it is, the national championship bill right there. So I mean, two, two Twitter posts. In the last hour, everything else is LeBron and the Nets still like it classically always is. Womp womp. Doesn't move the needle over here for us. You won't catch us, you know, talking about... When was the last time we even talked about the Lakers, honestly? I I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even tell you. We know LeBron. Yes, get it. We get it. We get it. We all get it. It's LeBron. I mean, what do we have to talk about with LeBron? You know, when we talk about kind of recertification in this year's NBA or this year's NFL, you know, uh, having those four quarterbacks, Matt Ryan, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers. For, you know, Aaron Rodgers Super Bowl kind of asterisk there. Uh, But, uh, you, you know, LeBron, recertification. We know LeBron's always great. He's, dry, he's averaging like 30 points this season. We know he's great. Why do we have to keep talking about him? I get you talking about him, keeping tabs on him. Absolutely. I absolutely do that. But every single day, every single minute, every single hour, I mean, this is what we're doing? Instead of getting ready for the national championship game? I just don't get it sometimes, folks. I just don't get it sometimes. But let's digress here. Here we go. March Madness tonight. We got the finals, folks. Number eight, North Carolina versus number one, Kansas. North Carolina upsetting Duke and spoiling Coach K's last ride. Kansas just absolutely taking care of business against Villanova in the final four. So both of these teams have truly stunted all their way throughout the tournament here. And one of these teams is going to have the all ultimate stunt stunting on the final four floor tonight number one Kansas or number eight UNC now they both have big beefs so we really don't know what to call here folks we love the big beefs Kansas got it done with the beef UNC got it done with the beef as well here and let me double check this um he is gonna be playing right that big beef for North Carolina I am blanking on the name but uh, let me see if I can go to the matchup here bring up the injuries um and no he's good to go I don't even see him on here so bingo bango all the big beefs are going to be playing in the national championship game so that's absolutely fantastic Fantastic. Let's see what the spread is currently quickly here. We got Kansas minus four. Man, oh man, the last three game spreads have been four point spreads. How crazy. 
So, North Carolina plus four, Kansas minus four, and man, oh man, they both looked real good. Kansas got out to a hot start, and that may have been the hottest Kansas has been all throughout this tournament, just right from the get-go. 11-0 run against Villanova, never lost a lead, never was really close after that, and they just really ran away with it, where UNC kind of had to work the entire game to get the lead and, you know, keep the lead and win the game. So, Kansas minus four, UNC plus four out here. This is going to be real interesting. The uh, I am, on a first look, UNC, you know, they were looking real good, and I would say take the points here, but the way that Kansas played against Villanova, it was just utter dominance, folks, truly utter dominance. And North Carolina was kind of... Uh, just beefier than Duke overall, but they're not going to be beefier than Kansas. This Kansas team is big time beefy. We absolutely love it. North Carolina, they still have their beef. Absolutely. The, the guy that we were talking about that kind of twisted his ankle a little bit ended up, you know, exiting the game for like five seconds, running out of the tunnel to get back out on the floor, and then fouled out a couple of plays later. But overall, the man had like 11 points and 20-plus rebounds. It's fantastic. So, yes, UNC still has beef, but I don't know. There's something about that Kansas beef that I'm just loving, folks. So, I'm going to be taking Kansas minus four tonight. North Carolina plus the four points is truly looking appetizing here, but just the sheer dominance that Kansas showed in the Final Four matchup, I think I, 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 there's something about it, folks. It's tickling my fancy. So I'm taking Kansas because of the utter dominance that they showed in the Final Four against Villanova, folks. And we'll see if number eight, UNC, who's not playing like a number eight seed, I'll tell you that. They are playing like a number one, number two seed, absolutely. But we'll see if they can continue their historic run and go and beat Duke and then go and beat Kansas. Uh, that's pretty two great, historically great basketball school, schools that you just beat uh, to win the national championship. So that will definitely be a great narrative for UNC. But I don't know if I'm seeing it here tonight, folks. I'm swallowing the four with Kansas here tonight. Alrighty, that's all the March Madness talk we had to talk about. Let's see what our, do we still have our algorithm up? Let's see. Let's run it. Let's run it one more time. Yes, folks, for shits and giggles here, we still got our algorithm up. Let's see. Does the algorithm agree, disagree with us? Is the algorithm going to call the game right? Let's quickly see. Kansas versus North Carolina. Here we go, North Carolina. Here we go. And the algorithm says Kansas, folks. They say Kansas. And uh, Kansas gets 75 out of 100 credit points in our algorithm. And UNC only gets 63 and a half out of 100 credit points. So, yeah, algorithms agreeing. The beefiness, the beef test agrees. We're going with. Actually, I don't even think this is our algorithm. I think this is their, their basic algorithm. All right. So, ours isn't updated still. All right, what's this one? That's a different tab. All right. All right, so this isn't our algorithm, and we're not going to go and run it again. So, all right, the generic algorithm says Kansas. We say Kansas. Beef test uh, says Kansas, folks. So, we're all going Kansas minus the four tonight. All right, that is all the March Madness talk we had to go over for today. So now let's shift gears to the NBA, where we got to do a lot here in the NBA. We got to break down a lot of games from last night, but we will start talking about the games in a little bit more uh, faster fashion out here. We're not going to give any real time of day to the garbage teams not making the playoffs, can never make the playoffs, officially eliminated from the playoffs, everything like that. So we'll try to talk through these games a little bit more faster out here. So we got to break down the games from last night, update our power rank quickly and then bet on the NBA tonight. So let's kick it off here with breaking down the games from last night. We had some real good ones, some disappointments, but overall some good ones as well. So let's start here with the first game up, Washington at the Celtics. And man, oh man, once again, uh, you know, Celtics, even missing Robert Williams, they were big time favorites last night. We were a little hesitant. We took the Wizards plus the points last night, plus 13, I believe the number was. And uh, we did not hit the bet, which I think I'm kind of happy with. Yes, losing money is never good. I get it, folks. But at the end of the day, the Celtics dominated. So I think that's a good silver lining. Yes, 
Yes, Celtics absolutely destroy the Wizards last night, and that's exactly what I wanted. And Porzingis didn't even have a good night, which we kind of assumed because, hey, he's their big. The Celtics don't have a big. We thought Porzingis would dominate, but he didn't. So this was an absolute great, huge, fantastic, must-dominate win for the Celtics to show, hey, we're more than just Robert Williams, which we know they are. Robert Williams, he is he's just their beef. You know, we're not saying that Robert Williams is their best scorer, or like a top three scorer, top five five score, top seven score on this team, but he is their beef, he is their defender, and he is their rebounder. <clears throat> So they do definitely miss that aspect with them, but they, man, oh man, they won by 42 points last night, folks. Celtics get the win 144 to 102. For the Celtics, Jason Tatum, 22 points, 7 assists, 6 rebounds. Jalen Brown, 32 points, 5 assists, 7 rebounds. So the Stars showed up last night. Marcus Mart, 7 points, but those 7 assists, yes, sir. And he only took 6 shots. This is kind of what we need for Marcus Mart. And maybe we actually need him to actually put up more points, more shots. Once again, we don't love Marcus Smart taking all these shots. We want him to be the facilitator. But without Robert Williams, yeah, overall production is going to have to ramp up by everybody. Everybody. So if Marcus Smart wants to start taking maybe like 12 to 15 shots a game, I don't know if I'll disagree with it. But he didn't do that last night, and they still get the win. So, hey, either way you do it, Marcus Mar, he knows what he's doing out there. He knows what he's doing out there. We don't have to question him. So, 7.7 7 assists for Marcus Mart last night. Daniel Tice at the 5. 6 points, 2 rebounds. See where we're a little, you know, not too much looking forward to the playoffs. Uh, off the bench here, they got great production, and this is truly what's going to help the Celtics out down the stretch. This bench production, man, oh man. Derek White, 17 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists. Grant Williams, 16 points. Peyton Pritchard, 14 points on 62% shooting. Peyton Pritchard finally coming into his own. We absolutely love it. And then Aaron Nesmith, only playing 8 minutes last night, 11 points. Yes, sir. So, we haven't seen the Celtics bench play like this in all year long, folks. All all year long they have not been playing like this but man oh man everybody picking up the slack here without Robert Williams and trying to put their best foot forward and man oh man they keep winning so fantastic for the Celtics absolutely love it well done with the win last night and then for the Wizards just Porzingis you know lackluster 17.7 rebounds <laughs> I mean what are we doing so Wizards couldn't pull it together they get absolutely blown out by 40 plus points Celtics mm, love it love it Celtics get the win 144 to 102 all right, next game up here, we got the Mavericks at the Bucks, and yeah, this was a little bit of a step back here with the Bucks. and once again, you know, we, you know, uh, Giannis getting our MVP vote is contingent on the Bucks getting that number one seed in the Eastern Conference, but they just lost last night at home to this Mavericks team. Now the Bucks are two games out from that number one seed, so they're gonna have to, you know, dig down. Close out the season, win out to try and get that number one seed, folks. But man, oh man, Mavericks get to win 118-112 Mavericks. I mean, sheesh, folks, this is a real team. This is a team that we should all be afraid of. Can we stop with the Nets and start, like, uplifting the Mavericks and start uplifting the Hawks? Obviously, uplift the Mavericks more than the Hawks at the current moment. But, I mean, this is a team that we should be afraid of because they're three-point shooting. They are living and dying by it. They went 16 of 38 from the three last night, 42% from the three, and really the three was the main difference the Bucks they don't have that three-point shooting to keep up with this Mavericks team who live and die by the three they don't have any beef anymore they got rid of Porzingis this is not a beefy big team we know this this is the only team at the current moment that is truly living and dying by the three and winning, succeeding in a bigs world. The Mavericks, they win by six, 118-112, and they hit two more threes than the Bucks did, or one more three than the Bucks did, folks. Two less threes, one more three made, and that's kind of the difference. That's kind of the difference. That's kind of what it boiled down to in the fourth quarter when the Mavericks were just kept hitting the three and the Bucks had no answer. So Mavericks get the win here. Luka Doncic, 32 points, 15 assists, eight rebounds, shooting three of nine from the three. Reggie Bullock, three of six from the three for 16 big old points. Dwight Powell at the five, 22 points, 13 rebounds. Spencer Dinwiddie coming up the bench, folks. Three of four from the three, 11 points, four assists, and... 
Spencer Dinwiddie truly making a huge difference on this Mavericks team overall, which we absolutely love. And then for the Bucks, losing last night, Giannis, 28 points, 10 rebounds. Chris Middleton flounders big time. Big time, took 14 shots, shot 21%. Oh, a four from three. Oh, a four from three. And I, rem I remembered something today. Uh, remember last season, folks? Remember last season? This is why we have everything on the record because I went through my Twitter account and re-brought it up, folks, uh, to show y'all, hey, hey, sometimes y'all get a little out of control with your narratives a little bit. Remember y'all were calling Chris Middleton the Batman during the Bucks playoff run all run long last season? It was always Chris Middleton was the Batman. Giannis was playing Robin. Remember that? Remember y'all saying that? Because I remember it. We, we talked about it in depth because we couldn't believe what y'all were saying. That Giannis was number two. That Giannis was playing Robin to Chris Middleton's Batman. It was unacceptable, folks. It was an unacceptable narrative. It was a wrong narrative, and it was unacceptable. But once again, y'all are running with this unacceptable narrative that we should all be scared of the Nets. Y'all do this sometimes. Y'all do this sometimes. And, you know, y'all don't do this on everything, but y'all do this sometimes. And this is what y'all are doing again. Yeah, uh, Chris Middleton is the Batman. That was last year. And now this year, we should all be afraid of the Nets. That's just the wrong narrative. There's always one wrong narrative, one main wrong narrative that gets floated around by everybody. And I don't get it. But I'm here to call him out. <laughs> I am here to call him out, folks. So, yes, Chris Middleton is always the Robin. 11 points last night, shooting 21%. Oh, four from the three. When your team needs to lock and load from the three to match up with the Mavericks. Did y'all not go over that in practice? Hey, we kind of have to be in our game for three or at least close out so they don't hit them. They couldn't close out from three. They were hitting them. So the only way to win when a team is hitting threes is to hit more threes if you can't close out and defend like the Bucks couldn't do that last night so many wide open threes in the fourth quarter I mean what are we doing defensively they were switching on everything and every, there was always a three-point shooter left open come on let's fix the defense man man you played great defense against the Nets this got us on board with Giannis winning the MVP and then you followed it up with you know a performance getting blown out but everybody was on the bench so you know okay or everybody didn't play I should say okay we can understand it and then you followed it up with losing against the Mavericks at home I would love to give Giannis the MVP folks but I think I'm truly sticking to that number one seed restriction in the Eastern Conference because when we just look at the standings overall folks this Bucks team would be like the fourth seed they'd be the fourth seed in the Western Conference probably no they'd be the fifth seed they would be the fifth seed right now in the Western Conference this is why Giannis must be the number one seed in the Eastern Conference to get our MVP vote now they're actually two and Two and a half games back. They're the third seed in the Eastern Conference. So, yeah, I'm holding this Bucks team firm, firm on that number one seed. I will not vote for Giannis if he's not the number one seed. You must show us something extraordinary. We're talking about MVP. This is the highest award that there is. Single player individual award that there is this season. And I'm not going to give it to Giannis, a part of a great defending NBA championship team being the third seed in the Eastern Conference, being the fifth seed if he was in the West, potentially dropping down. The Nuggets are only one game back. One game back from Milwaukee, folks. Jokic. And y'all want to clown around him with the MVP discussion. This is what we're talking about. We need Giannis to show us something. You can't lose against this Mavericks team. This Mavericks team is good. This is not a knock on the Mavericks. This is a good team. But for the Bucs, you know, defending champions, everybody kind of, you know, we we were championing them. I mean, after that Nets game, I mean, yeah, we were all in 100% on the box. But we need to see the consistency. I'm done with the one game showing out and then taking another night off and then not showing up the next night. I'm done with all of that. Uh, which team? I was just thinking about a team that's doing that all um the up and down the hit and miss it's over and over and over and over and over again we got the grizzlies winning eight games win streak seven game win streak right now without john morant it's possible to do this we once again we are not holding any team to uh, some unholy standard that can never be achieved we don't do that <coughs> so 
<clears throat> I'm holding Giannis to being that number one seed in the Eastern Conference. If he doesn't get it, I'm going with Jokic as the MVP. I'm going with Jokic as the MVP. And as we're talking about MVP, let's bring up this story. We were going to save it to the end, but here it is. Uh, Joel B sounded off on the MVP conversation. He says, quote, I don't, I don't know what I have to do. I feel like they hate me. You want to talk about hating? They hate on Jokic. Y'all hate on Jokic so much, and I don't get it. Um, I have some theories on why, but I'm not going to express them here. Uh, but, um, yeah, Joel Embiid saying, oh, I think they hate me. I think the MVP kind of, you know, voters hate me. You really think that? Because you know what I witnessed? I, I, I've been kind of keeping track of this a little bit, and I'm truly ready to kind of confirm that this is 100% of a conspiracy. Everybody's conspiring against Jokic of doing this. But watching the Bucks game last night, or yesterday, it was on ABC, um, watching that game, Giannis in the MVP discussion, so, you know, obviously the, the topic got brought up, MVP, and I'm telling y'all folks, I want y'all to go out and, I mean, they're going to be talking about MVP for the final stretch, so this is going to get brought up more, but watch for every live telecast, folks, when they bring up the MVP discussion, watch for the stats that they bring up on the graphic. Now, the top three are kind of Giannis and Bede and Jokic, and they're all bigs, so the natural categories that they put up are the points in the rebounds and I have no problem with that of course they're bigs bring up the points bring up the rebounds absolutely but what does Jokic do well that separates himself from the field the assisting numbers the passing numbers they never the national broadcast graphics never show the assisting numbers with all the bigs Jokic has eight assists he's two assists shy of a triple double the man's averaging like 13 rebounds and eight assists Assists. No other big is close. Joel Embiid is averaging like three or four assists, folks. Giannis is um, is Giannis at like five? Giannis may be around like five assists, but nobody's close to eight assists, folks. Yeah, uh, Jokic is doing eight assists. It's phenomenal, and that's why. And he's also the fifth seed here in the Western Conference, which we know is way tougher than the Eastern Conference because we just told y'all the Bucks would be like the sixth seed. In the Western Conference. And they're the third in the Eastern. So we know the West is harder than the East. Joe Kiki is getting it done with no Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. And he's got eight assists. He is the facilitator. He's the scorer. He's the rebounder. He's the beef. He's the defender. He's the leader. And the passer. And the facilitator. And he's got them at the fifth seed here. In the tougher Western Conference, only one game behind Giannis with a defending champion team, with Chris Middleton, with Bobby Portis able to fill in no problem without Brooke Lopez, with Drew Holiday, Drew Holiday the true facilitator on the floor for Giannis, Giannis doesn't have to be the facilitator himself, and Giannis is out here, currently the third seed in the Eastern Conference. So that's what I'm saying out here, folks. I'm telling you how I feel about the MVP race. There it is. Laid it out all for you. I'm going with Jokic at the current moment if the Bucks are going to kind of play around with these games. Two and a half games back from the number one seed. I get it. You want to take the night off against, who was it, the Clippers? Yeah, if you want to take a night off after that Nets game, for the Clippers, I got no problem with that. I truly don't. I really had no problem with that. But then you follow it up with losing against the Mavericks? I don't know, folks. I don't know if I can give Giannis the MVP, folks. Just calling it how I see it. I don't know what y'all want from me. So, Chris Middleton, once again, stop with the Batman. Y'all haven't said that this season, so don't let that creep back in. But also stop it with the Nets. That was another overall message. So, Joe Kidd currently our MVP, and stop it with the Chris Middleton Batman narrative, and stop it with the Nets. That's overall the last, what do we spend on that, 10 minutes? So... Bucks lose against the Mavericks. They got to hit the threes, and they didn't. I mean, they they this we we, and we once again, you know, with this Bucks team losing that Dante Divincenzo, and we've seen him been doing work. So if the Bucks lose the season, I think we can trace it back a little bit to Dante Divincenzo not being on this team, not having that guard depth off the bench. So. Bucks end up losing. It was close, but they were kind of losing all game, folks. So, 
Mavericks get the win, 118-112. Luka Doncic doing his thing. This Mavericks team, this is the team we should be afraid of. We should be afraid of this Mavericks team because, I mean, all their, they're all just big, folks. They're all just, like, long players. There's really no small players on this Mavericks team. They've got bench depth, and they all can hit threes. I mean, we should be afraid of this Mavericks team. They play very well defense. They've got length on their team. they got length on the team, and they can all hit threes. That's a team we should be afraid of. So, Mavericks getting it done. What an absolute great win last night. They get the win 118-112. to 112. All right, next game up here is the Nuggets at the Lakers, and LeBron doesn't play. LeBron, two games out from the playing tournament, doesn't play. Oh, I'm not going to play tonight. Yeah, we should be focusing on a player that's not playing, right? National media. National media, correct? We should be focusing on LeBron. That's the biggest story in the NBA, a guy that's not playing down the stretch, down, not in the playing tournament. Yeah, that's who we should be focusing in on. Ah, okay. Uh, but the Nuggets, they get the win last night. Jokic, 38 points, 18 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals, 2 blocks, shot 68%. Yeah, okay. But yeah, the, the uh, you know, the... MVP voters, they hate Embiid. They hate Embiid. Yeah, okay. All right, Embiid. They hate you and not Jokic. Okay, okay. Uh, Jokic's numbers are better from last season, even though he won MVP last season. So an MVP doing better than what he did last season, was it, wouldn't you just kind of naturally say, hey, he should be MVP again this season? Obviously, take everything into consideration, everybody else's numbers. But, I mean, just kind of baseline, seeing an MVP do better from last season to this season, yeah, they should, you know, be maybe front runners. Aaron Rodgers did worse. Did worse, and y'all gave him MVP? Joe Kick is doing better, and you don't want to give him MVP? Who hates who, Embiid, Okay. Jeez, jeez Louise, it, 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 something, something's going around here, folks, something's going around, I don't get it, I don't get what's going on, so, Joe Kick absolutely gets it done, Aaron Gordon with another 20 plus point performance, yes, what is this, like three in a row, three straight games, four straight games, four out of the last five, what has it been, but Aaron Gordon down the stretch, yeah, yeah, exceeding our expectations, we love it, 24 points on 64% shooting, and he shot three of five from the three, wow, Absolutely great. Eight rebounds and three assists to go along with that. Will Barton, a great 25 points. And Monte Moore, six points on 11% shooting. Not good there, but he had 10 assists, so we'll absolutely take that. And then the Nuggets bench. Man, oh man. Bones, Highland, always getting it done. 10 points, four assists. DeMarcus Cousins, 14 points. And Devon Reed, 10 points. Once again, no Bryn Forbes, which we absolutely hate. No Fakant, no Capazzo. What are we doing? And Austin Rivers still gets 22 minutes. One assist. One assist in 22 minutes, but let's not play Bryn Forbes. Okay, okay. But the Nuggets got it done last night. They get the win. And then for the Lakers, Anthony Davis does play, but LeBron holds everybody high and dry. Anthony Davis, 28 points, 8 assists, 9 rebounds. Russell Westbrook, 27 points, 7 assists, 10 rebounds, only 1, uh, no, actually, 2 turnovers last night. And uh, it was real crazy. Everybody started to love Russell Westbrook again last night. Russell Westbrook out there on the floor. LeBron taking the night off. Everybody kind of wanted to praise Russell Westbrook a little bit for that. In the first half, they were praising Russell Westbrook, and then they were losing in the second half, so everybody went crickets on him. But once again, y'all are so wishy-washy on Russell Westbrook. You don't catch us doing that over here, folks. We support Russell Westbrook and everything that he does. But Lakers come up short like they've done all year long and get the loss by 11. Nuggets get the win, 129-118. to 118. <clears throat> All right, next game up here, we got the Pistons at the Pacers. Pistons get the win, 121, 117 over the Pacers. Who cares? Um, you know, Pistons just doing it with Sadiq Bey. Once again, competitive. Sadiq Bey had 31 points. No Cade Cunningham, and they still get the win. This is a good Pistons team. They're competitive. They're still doing the same things that we all know they do, and the Pacers are still doing the same thing that we all know they do, losing games. Closely, but still losing games. Tyrese Halliburton, 19 points, 17 assists, 9 rebounds. All that was fantastic, and they still lose. It's a bonus. Everything that he did when he was here. Fantastic. But they still lose. This goes deeper. This is in the fa fibers. This is in the fibers of the Pacers organization. It's on the floor. It's on the court. It's in the jerseys. It's in the air. It's in the air docks. It's everywhere, folks. Losing is ingrained in this Pacers team in the fibers on a molecular level. You're not getting that out. I'll tell you that. Uh, so Pacers end up losing, folks, 121 to 117, and they were kind of winning for most of the most of the game. 
All right, then the next game up here, 76ers at the Cavs. Very well done. 76ers winning, and they've really kind of taken advantage of this kind of uh, the last three days. They had two games, won them both, and uh, they won last night. They get the win, 112-108 over the Cavs. It was a close game, so we still want to see the 76ers kind of blow out some teams and you know, for the Cavs, no Evan Mobley last night. So once again, it's just kind of Darius Garland and Karis LeVert. But we've seen Moses Brown absolutely play very well. Uh, three deep, big, still getting it done. But 76ers do get the win last night. James Harden, triple-double, 21 points, 10 assists, 10 rebounds. Joel Embiid, 44 points, 17 rebounds, a manic game. Tyrese Maxey, a little eh, 11 points on 36% shooting. Tobias Harris, once again, eh. He stepped up in the game against uh, the Hornets. He had a really great game, 20-plus points. But here he is, back, 11 points on 28% shooting. So once again, the consistency has to be here with the 76ers. We can't get excited over one game by the 76ers because we see what they do in their next game. Oh, a dominant win against the Hornets, like 40-plus points. And then they only win by four against the Cavs. So we've seen this all year long by the 76ers. One great game. One bad, or not one great game, one eh game, averageish game, win, lose, still overall average. Once again, that, you know, kind of took the heat off of Doc Rivers because one game, George's Niang in the starting lineup went nuts and we rebought into the 76ers. So we know this is what the team is, which once again gives us a little bit of pause with the 76ers team in the playoffs when they have to do a seven game series and they're still playing every other night. One great game. Oh, maybe they have one bad game. And then another great game, and maybe it goes seven games. And once again, the fatigue factor is going to set in at some point for the 76ers. So it's still not giving us the reassurance we need to truly buy into the 76ers, but they are winning, so we can't knock them too much. But this is something that we do have to, once again, keep our eye on. Once again, nothing great off the bench. Leading score was Georges Niang with eight points coming off the bench. But, you know, once again, we need more. We're going to need more. I'm telling you, we're going to need better bench production from the 76ers if they're going to want to win, especially with Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris both only putting up 11 points on really poor shooting percentages. We're going to need something better from the bench, and that's where Doc Rivers flounders because he can't coach. All right, and then for the Cavs last night, well done of being competitive, absolutely. Uh, Karis LeVert, 18.7 assists. Darius Garland, 23 points, 4 steals, 4 assists, 4 rebounds, 4-4-4 four, 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 all across the board. Uh, Moses Brown, once again, in the starting lineup at the 5, filling in for Evan Mobley, filling in for Jared Allen. And Moses Brown had a pretty okay night, 9 points, 12 rebounds. It's not terrible overall. Lauren Markkanen, 16 points, 7 rebounds off the bench. Rondo, 6 points, 2 steals, 2 assists. Kevin Love, 12 points, 5 rebounds. Lamar Stevens, 18 points. So everybody was kind of being really solid with the Cavs team. And, uh, you know, once again, the Cavs are in the playoffs. I don't know if they're going to be a tough out. I don't know. They may win one game in their first series. Who do they got? If the season ended right now, the Cavs, Cavs face. Uh, oh, they got the playing tournament. So, all right. All right, seventh seed in the playing tournament now. Unfortunately, just dropping, dropping, dropping. Uh, they've got the Atlanta Hawks round one, and then they face the winner of the Nets and the Hornets. So, yeah, maybe the Cavs don't even make the playoffs this season. And how crazy would that be from the freaking, what were they, third seed at one point in the Eastern Conference? Man, oh, man. So, Cavs, oh, how the mighty have fallen. Just too many injuries to truly overcome the season. It is truly one of the saddest stories that there is in the uh, NBA currently. So, Cavs, they kept it competitive. 76ers. Uh, all right, all right, let's be a little bit more dominant, a little bit more consistent. But uh, until then, uh, going to have to take it slowly with them. 76ers get the four-point win, 112-108. to 108. All right, then we get the Knicks at the Magic. Knicks get it done. Thank you. 118-88 win uh, for the Knicks. Evan Fournier, two points. <laughs> Evan Fournier, two points on five shots. Jeez Louise. Uh, Alec Burks, 19 points. RJ Barrett, always consistent, 27 points. Obi Toppin, once again, in the starting lineup for uh, Julius Randle, 20 points, eight rebounds. Well done. So, Knicks get the win. Magic trash. They put up 88 points. Knicks get the win, 118-88. to 88. All right, then we get the Heat at the Raptors, and this was a huge game. And this is going to reflect very high in our power rankings. But the Heat get the win, 114-109. Great game, competitive game. Miami Heat without 
Jimmy Butler last night, get it done. And once again, the Heat win, and look who's in the starting lineup, and look who's off the bench. Max Struess in the starting lineup. No Jimmy Butler, and Duncan Robinson still is not in the starting five. Thank you. Thank you, Miami Heat. Thank you, Eric Spolstra, for figuring out the starting lineup, figuring out the rotations, experimenting. We've seen Max Roos in the starting lineup. What is his second, third game last night in the starting lineup in lieu of Duncan Robinson at the two? And what happens? They're winning. Max Roos is giving us phenomenal production. 23 points last night. Leading scorer. Shot seven of nine from three. Magnificent. Isn't that supposed to be? Duncan Robinson, folks, a very, very great three-point shooter. That's what all the stats tell us. But what have we been saying all year long? We do not like Duncan Robinson at all in the starting lineup. What also do we say all season long? Can we play around and experiment with the starting lineups? Do it in the early part of the season, not the back end of the season, because, you know, we need to shore things up now, get our playoff spot now. We should have already had the whole rotation situation figured out by now. But hey, better late than never. The Heat saw it all falling apart. They were all blowing up on each other on the sideline, on the bench. Things getting, you know, kind of heated. Eric Spolstra yelling, the players yelling, things getting kind of thrown a little bit. Inches away from shoving happening as well. And what do they do? Switch up the starting lineup, move Duncan Robinson down to the bench, and that was the best decision they've ever made. Damn, thank y'all, Heat, for listening to us. <laughs> we know what we're talking about for the most part, yes. Well done for the Heat last night, getting that big time win. Loved it. This was their starting five last night. Kyle Lowry at the one, Max Struess at the two, Caleb Martin at the three, Markeith Morris at the four, and Bam Adebayo at the five. So, man, a oh man, missing three starters, filling them in fantastically, and beating a very, very good Raptors team last night. The Heat are almost back. I don't know if I classify them at a, as 100% back, but they're almost back. Yes, folks? Love it. Kyle Lowry last night, 16 points, 10 assists, 6 rebounds. Max Struess, that fantastic 23-point performance. Bam Adebayo, 16 points, 9 rebounds. And then Markeith Morris with a nice 10 points to help out as well. Tyler Hero still doing his thing, 18 points, 8 assists, nine rebounds coming off the bench and Duncan Robinson only playing 12 minutes last night zero points on two shots thank y'all heat y'all are doing it Victor Oladipo gets it done he comes off the bench love him coming off the bench 21 points four assists three rebounds I mean guys are gonna have to come off the bench on this heat team they're deep folks this is a still a deep deep team when they're all healthy and they're all healthy for the most part right now a little bit of load management at the current moment but uh, overall Victor Oladipo coming off the bench him, Tyler Hero, man, oh, man, that's all you need off the bench. Don't even need Duncan Robinson anymore. He get the win. And then for the Raptors, just coming up a little short last night, Fred Van Vliet, 29.7 assists, fantastic. Gary Trent Jr., 19 points. Pascal Siakam, 29 points, 5 assists, 8 rebounds on 61%. And Scotty Barnes with a real good 19.7 rebounds, but, but they come up short. Nothing really great off the bench. So, he get the five-point win, 114-109, and the Heat are maybe back, folks, which is going to be a dangerous team in the playoffs, absolutely. If they can all kind of re- Re-get together, re-buy in, re-dog up, restart woofing up those towels, start to wag in the playoffs. This is going to be a dangerous Heat team. Another team we should be afraid of over the Nets in the playoffs if the Heat start to wag their tails. Those Heat dogs start to wag those tails, those tails wagging back and forth, fluttering, almost taking off because they're going as fast as a helicopter propeller. The dogs are almost lifting off the ground. That's when we should all be afraid of the heat. And those tails are starting to wag, folks. Starting to potentially wag. He get the five-point win, 114-109. All right, next game up here, we got the Timberwolves at the Rockets, and the Timberwolves get the win. A little bit closer than we would have liked, but overall, win's a win. We're not going to knock it. Uh, Timberwolves get the win, 139-132 to 132 over the Rockets last night. For the Timberwolves, let's start with the big three. D'Angelo Russell, 22 points, 9 assists, 4 steals. Love it. Carl Anthony Towns, 28 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists. Love it. On 75% shooting as well, I may add. And Anthony Edwards, 33 points. Yeah, yeah, he's back. He's 
he's back. Anthony Edwards done with these five, six, seven point performances. 33 points led the team in scoring. 33 points, five assists, four rebounds on 57% shooting from the field. Magnificent. And then off the bench, Jalen Noel, 10 points. Jordan McLaughlin, 9 points. Josh Okuji, 11 points. That's all we need when the big three is taking care of business. Well done for the Timberwolves. And they're going to be moving up a little bit in our power rankings as well. And then for the Rockets, we had Jalen Green, 31 points. Josh Christopher coming off the bench, 30 points. But who cares? It's the Rockets. They're done. Timberwolves, very well done getting the win, 139 points. Impressive. They get the win, 139 to 132. All right, then we get the Suns at the Thunder, and the Thunder win, 117-96, to 96, but, but it was just Chris Paul playing out there with the Suns. Chris Paul, 11 points, 9 assists, no Devin Booker, no Jay Crowder, no DeAndre Ayton last night, so they're a little bit lackluster overall when they're not having their pieces, so we can understand the loss last night. McCall Bridges was their leading scorer with 18 points. Now, this Suns team still should have won last night. This isn't 100% kind of, you know, oh, let's forget about it. Uh, because the Thunder, they didn't have anybody last night either. No Shea Gills, Alexander. You know, Lugan's door, they've been out for a while. It was just Alexev Pukosovetsky who had a triple-double. <laughs> 17 points, 12 assists, 10 rebounds to help out with the Thunder win last night. So, Suns, they need that full strength. They didn't have it last night. They lose 117-96. We won't blow it too much out of, out of proportion, but still not good optically loss. All right, then we get the Blazers at the Spurs, and the Spurs, once again, take care of business. Spurs get the win, 113-92 to for the Spurs. Once again, holding it down, truly buying in, and uh, looking to kind of secure that 10th seed for that play-in tournament spot. So, for the Spurs last night, we had Trey Jones at the 1, 18 points, 7 assists, 7 rebounds. We had Josh, uh, Joshua Primo, 9 points, 3 rebounds. Zach Collins at the 5, 18 points, 13 rebounds. Calden Johnson, 28 points, helping out. And, uh, you know... No DeJounte Murray, no Jacob Podal, and they still get the win. Big time impressive with the Bla uh, with the Spurs. Now it's against the Blazers, who we know they've got nobody, but still, a win's a win. We're not going to knock it too much. Spurs get the win, 113-92. Final two games of the night here, Warriors at the Kings. Warriors take care of business, 109-90. Nice 19-point dominant win. Once again, no Steph Curry, but Jordan Poole, he fills in magnificently. Do the Warriors think about trading Steph Curry? I know that's black blasphemous to say but man oh man it would cross my mind for like a uh, a split second oh maybe i trade and then i say no of course not we don't do that but man oh man jordan Poole, folks we gotta we just give it up can we give it i mean let's do a little bit of a round of applause that he truly deserves it folks little, little five second round of applause join us join us folks will you I mean, it's absolutely fantastic, folks. Jordan Poole last night, 22 points, 4 of 9 from 3, 5 assists, 5 rebounds. Steph Curry-esque all day out here, and he's been doing this ever since Steph Curry's been out, and ever since Klay Thompson's been out, and ever since Klay Thompson returned, he's been doing it off the bench. Jordan Poole deserves a lot of recognition out here, folks. Um, truly flying under the radar because it's easy to get lost in the shuffle here by the Warriors, but let's not forget the great groundwork. The Warriors were like the 1-2-3 seed, even without Klay Thompson. Okay, Jordan Poole deserves all that credit. Most of the credit. Majority of the credit. I'm giving the majority of the pie to Jordan Poole. Yes, pieces go to Steph Curry. Obviously, Steve Kerr. That's really it. Andrew Wiggins, a little slice. A little slice. Um, but Jordan Poole, absolutely fantastic. Uh, no Clay Thompson last night. Gary Payton filling in at the two. Doesn't do Clay Thompson things. Two points, zero assists, three rebounds, 0 of one from the three. Andrew Wiggins finally stepping re back up here. 25 points, led the team in scoring. Shot four of seven from the three, five assists, five rebounds. Yes, yes, this. This is the all star selected Andrew Wiggins we wanted to see. Love it. Off the bench, they got it done. Damian Lee, 11 points. Namaja Jellica, 19 points, six assists, 12 rebounds. And Jonathan Kaminga, 17 big old points, four assists, five rebounds to help out as well. And they beat the Kings. Once again, Davian Mitchell out there, and he had a lackluster night. Nine points. He still had nine assists, but nine points on 36% shooting. So uh, we need Davian Mitchell to be a little bit more consistent out there. And he has been very consistent. But, you know, if you're going to trade De'Aaron Fox and just keep Davian Mitchell, we're going to have to kind of see great performances all throughout. But overall, Davian Mitchell still a great season. Don't want to knock him too much. Warriors get the win, 109-90. And then the last game of the night here, Pelicans at the Clippers. And the Clippers win. And this is why the Clippers are back, folks. Yes, they just need a Paul George this 
They had the infrastructure. They just needed the superstar. Once the superstar returns, watch out for this Clippers team. And they're going to definitely be dangerous in the playoffs because nobody remembers the Clippers, folks. Nobody remembers. So... Clippers are good. Now they got Paul George. You don't want to face them. Another team we should be more scared of than the Nets. I'm more scared of the Clippers at this moment than the Nets. Uh, than I'm scared of the Nets, folks. Sorry. I don't know what you want from me. Uh, but the Pelicans lose in ooh, not great fashion. They lose by 19, 119 to 100 for the Clippers last night. Paul George, only 15 points, 7 assists. But, hey, they've got their leader back, so everybody increases their play. Reggie Jackson didn't shoot well, but had 11 points, 10 assists. We'll take the 10 assists. Shot 1 of 9 from the 3. Not great. Zubak at the 5, 16 points, 14 rebounds. That's a performance, I'll tell you that. Marcus Morris back at his old self, 22 points on 4 of 6 from the 3. And then the this bench, folks. Man, oh man. Terrence Mann, 15 points. Luke Kennard, 14 points. Isaiah Hartenstein, 12 points. Robert Covington, let's shout him out as well. 8 points, 2 steals, 1 assist, 2 rebounds, 1 block. I'll take it for a bench performer, absolutely. So, Clippers getting it done, getting the win. And then for the Pelicans, their big three just struggled last night. That's all it really was. CJ McCollum, he still had 19 points. That was the leading score. But overall, we've been seeing this man 25 plus, 30 plus, And he didn't shoot the best, 38%. Valanciunas only 8 points last night. What the hell is that? 8 points, 9 assists, or 9 rebounds. And then Brandon Ingram, 15 points on 27% shooting. 8 rebounds, 4 assists. So, big 3, a little lackluster for the Pelicans. They definitely need their superstars to get it done, and they didn't do that last night. So, they lose by 19, 119 to 100. Alrighty, that is all the basketball NBA from last night. Now, let's quickly reorder our power rankings here. We're going to do this a little bit more frequently here, not just once a week because we've got the final eight, nine days of the regular season here. So, why not have a little bit of fun here? Double kind of everything, everything getting double points out here. So, losses are worth more, losses are worth more, wins are worth more, blowouts are worth more, and all that. And let's have a little bit of fun with the power rankings as we close out crunch time. You should be getting it done. You should be playing your best basketball at the end of the season. It just makes sense. You play the entire year figuring out your team, figuring out the landscape, figuring out what you do well, and then improving upon that. And it all should be, this should be kind of dress rehearsals for the playoffs. Hey, let's all kind of play. No more load management. Let's get it done and you know hey let's put it all together final eight days final couple of games six seven games let's go and put it out there let's show what we can do let's strike fear into all the play all the teams that may be playing us in the playoffs let's make teams think about maybe even losing some games hey we don't want to play them first round oh we're only two games back from dropping two spots yeah, maybe let's do that. Let's do that. Sound good? Yeah, let's do that. Let's lose games. You want to have your opponent lose in games to get a lesser seed so they don't face you early in the playoffs. That's what everybody should be doing the final week, two weeks of the regular season. So... We are going to be reordering our power rankings, uh, not on a daily basis. I think we're going to go every three days. So, uh, we have a top 12 for the week, but we are cutting that down. We went with a top 12 on Friday because everybody really impressed us for the week, so we thought we'd shout out some extra teams here. But, but... Now we're in hyperdrive mode. Hyperdrive po power rankings, folks. So we're cutting it back down to 10. We're updating it every three days. And maybe even the next three days, we cut it down to eight. Stay tuned to Takes by Fans and see what we do. See what madness. <laughs> see what madness we come up with here in our laboratory. Uh, so here we go. This was the top 12 heading into this Monday. We did it on Friday. We're doing it on Monday. We took the games from Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And what they did during that three-day stretch, we are ordering our power rankings based on that. So here we go. This was the top 12 that we did on Friday. We had the... Hawks at 12, Hornets at 11, 76ers at 10, Spurs at 9, Timberwolves at 8, Raptors at 7, Mavs at 6, Nuggets at 5, Celtics at 4, Grizzlies at 3, Bucks at 2, and the Suns at that number 1 spot. So, a little bit of housekeeping here first. Let's get rid of number 11, the Hornets. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't be in the top 10. I'm just taking those two spaces away. So, Hornets at number 11, Hawks at number 12. We'll see if you crack the top 10 here. Have you done enough to crack the top 10? Let's quickly see. Now, we do have some new additions here, some teams exiting. 
But let's run through the newly updated top 10 here quickly. So here we go. New number 10 team. And we've got the Raptors at number 10. Falling back a little bit. Now, it's not 100% on what they've done. Some teams have been very, very good and impressive. Great wins these last three days. So Raptors falling back a little bit here. Over the last couple of days, they went 1-1. Uh, one and one. They beat the Magic, lost to the Heat. So you see why they have to drop back a little bit. Lost to the Heat. Heat re-emerging. And the Heat are coming up in the power rankings here at number 9. New number 9 team here. And, man, oh, man, it's been a while since this team has cracked the top 10. They weren't even in the top 12, anything like that. Heat are maybe back, folks. Once again, those dogs' tails are starting to wag a little bit. Not that kind of thunderous wag we want to see where they take off off the ground and they're kind of hovering over the ground because the uh, tail is generating so much uplift that is lifting the entire kennel off the ground. We've got a floating dog pound in the air, potentially starting to take off. They still need to be cleared, waiting for those kind of uh, those red air traffic control controllers out there to kind of wave them through, but they are almost taking off the heat over the last couple of days. The Heat have gone 2-0. They beat the Fraud Bulls, but the Raptors, they are not frauds here. So that's a great win. Heat at number 9. Love it. Love that they have Max Struess in the starting lineup. Love that they got rid of Duncan Robinson. Figuring out their lineups. Yes, they saw a problem. Hey, why are we losing all of a sudden? We never did this. Oh, all right, let's figure it out. And they figured it out. It's smart. I love it. I respect everybody on the Heat, folks. I mean, Eric Spolstra, metal man. Is he the greatest coach of all time, folks, in the NBA? I think you can make an argument. I think you can make an argument. Heat at number nine. I love it. All right, here we go. Number eight team. We got a new number eight team. And look at this team moving up. Look at this team moving up from 12 to eight. The Hawks. The Hawks. They just keep winning. They only had one game since Friday, folks. And it was, it was against the Nets. And they won. Yes, sir. They beat the scary Nets. Oh, my goodness. We should not be afraid. Not the gumdrop. It's right, right. That's the Nets. The Nets are um um oh what's his name from Shrek? One of the greatest movies of all time. Honestly, honestly, like not even animated movies. One of the greatest movies of all time. Shrek. I'm telling y'all, folks. That's a great movie. Um, shout out to the whole cast. It's it, it's a brilliant piece of cinema, folks. I don't know what you want from me. Early early days of animation, and they pull off this. Wow, wow. I don't even think it won an Oscar, which is disrespectful in itself. So. Give them an Oscar. They deserve an Oscar. One of the best movies ever made. <clears throat> but Lord Farquaad, that's who y'all think the Nets are? Lord Farquaad taking off everybody's gumdrop buttons? That's who we should be afraid of? No, no, of course not. Be afraid of Lord Farquaad. The man's three feet tall, folks. He's picking on gingerbread men. That's who we should be afraid of? People that bully gingerbread men? That's who y'all are afraid of? Okay. I'm afraid of that dragon. Before he ended up sleeping with the donkey. And then we saw, oh, this isn't really anything we should be afraid of. But we're digressing on the whole Shrek thing. Great movie. Obviously, we've all seen it. If you haven't, I don't know where you have been. Greatest movie of all time. But Hawks at number eight. I'm loving them here. Went and beat the Nets by seven. That's a convincing win. No late second buzzer beater. No refs blowing the game. Just the Hawks beating the Nets. That's all it was. Hawks at number eight. You got to love it. Man, oh, man, got to love it. All right, here we go. New number 17. This team moving up a little bit here in the power rankings from 8 to 7. We're putting the Timberwolves at number 7. I'm moving them up a little bit this week. Love it. They had a really great win this week, folks, or the last three days. Timberwolves, they went 2-0. They beat the Rockets. You got to beat the Rockets, so they did that. But then they went and beat the Nuggets by 6. Once again, pretty good convincing win, and they led the entire game. I don't think the Nuggets led that entire game, folks. So, Timberwolves getting it done. The big three. We just saw Anthony Edwards. Great performance. Holding it down against the Rockets. He's back, folks. We got to respect this Timberwolves team. They got a big three. They got some roll pieces, and uh, they are taking off, folks. Love this Timberwolves team. Got them at number eight. All righty here. Number seven. New number seven. Uh, whoa. Hang on. Hang on. What did I do here? What did I do here? Number eight was the Hawks. All right. That was, okay. Here we go. A little bit of a mistake here. Number eight was the Hawks. Number seven is the Timberwolves. That's all good. Uh, here we go. 
Timberwolves. Let's put them at number seven. And we go to number six now. And this team moving up a little bit. They're taking care of business, which is really kind of the only stipulation we had on them. We dropped them number uh, down to number 10 on Friday. But now we're moving them back up because they had two really good wins here. Good wins, not great wins. Good wins overall. So we respect it. Uh, 76ers, the new number six team here in the NBA over the last three days. The 76ers, they beat the Hornets and the Cavs. Now, not the best teams in the NBA, but they dominated that Hornets team. They won by like 40 points, folks. It was real gosh dang impressive. Went a little toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Cavs with nobody. Evan Mobley, Moses Brown filling in and all that. But they took care of business, and we are still keeping that in mind. Hey, the lackluster ability consistently the undomination consistently the fatigue the bench we are keeping that all in mind but they're winning games currently we can't knock it too much so let's keep that a uh, little bit in mind let's keep that in the I don't even want to put it in the back of our mind I wanted a little bit in the a uh, little bit at halfway point in our mind a little bit more leaning forward a little in you know leaning a little bit more forward a little bit in the circle but um yeah 76ers let's keep what they are in mind but we also know when Joel Embiid and James Harden are at their best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 76ers at six. Keep it up here so we don't have to move you down. Alrighty, new number five team. move. Got to move this team up. Absolutely. The Mavericks. Mavs moving up to number five. Folks, love it. I mean, this last week, folks, the last three days. The Mavericks, they win and beat the Bucks by six. Very great win. The threes were falling. Now, unfortunately, why we can't move them up uh, more than just one spot here this week is because they lost to the Wizards by 32. I mean, come on. Was Luka Doncic selling that so Chris Strap Porzingis could have had a win against them? Was that what they were doing? Because it looked like that's what they were doing, mailing it in, phoning it in, so Porzingis felt superior? I don't get it. Seemed like what they did. But they got blown out by the uh, Wizards, which is unacceptable. Absolutely. At this point, yes, yeah, sir. So, Mavericks only moving up one spot because they beat the Bucks last night. That was a good win last night. Very good win. All right, and because the Bucks lost to the Mavericks last night, we are dropping them back from number two to number four. We can't have you beat the Nets and then lose to the uh, Mavericks. We can't have you beat the Nets and then lose to the Mavericks in that fashion that you did. Getting kind of losing the entire game. Losing the entire game. Not having control of the entire game. What is that about? Now, the Bucks also lost against the Clippers. I'm not taking that loss into consideration that much because they had everybody resting. There was no Giannis, no Chris Middleton, no um, Drew Holiday. I, I think even Brooke Lopez didn't play that game. So, uh, you know, we expected them to lose. Absolutely. And they don't have the bench to win that game. No way. Uh, so I'm not even really counting that loss. It's an all right loss. I get why they rested everybody. But then to come back and lose against the Mavericks, that's where we have the problem. So we do have to move this Bucks team back. We know Giannis is fantastic and all that. But come on, let's win games. Let's win games consistently out here. That's what's impressive overall. Winning games. Bucks couldn't win. Bucks moved down. All right, number three team. And I'm glad we can move this team up. I love it. I never thought we'd be able to move this team up again, but here we are moving them up. I'm putting this team back at number three, folks. The Celtics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Losing Robert Williams, still winning games. They've won the last two games. They won against the Pacers in a close fashion, but then they went and dominated the Wizards by 42. Yeah, that's what the... Uh, that's what the Mavericks should have done against the Wizards. One by 42. That would have been impressive. But it's the Celtics doing that. The Celtics with no Robert Williams is winning by 42 against the Wizards. Not the Mavericks at full strength with Luka Doncic. The Celtics are doing it. Well done with the Celtics. Celtics getting it done. The bench is playing out of its mind. Celtics at number three. All right, and then here we go. New number two team. We're going Suns being dropped down a little bit out here. Suns, last week, they lost to the Grizzlies, and they lost to the Thunder. Lost to the Thunder because they didn't have anybody, but they had everybody against that Grizzlies team. The Grizzlies didn't have John Morant. So dropping the Suns back from one to two, they're still a great team, absolutely. Uh, but I'm putting the Grizzlies at number one. This team deserves to be number one. They're winning without John Morant. They're beating great competition they just went out and beat the Suns by eight points that's a dominant win it wasn't like they won by last second buzzer beater three no 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 they're winning dominating dominating without John Morant shout out to the Grizzlies number one seed they deserve it they this is their time to shine they've been shining this is their time to shine here on the top 10 well done with the Grizzlies earning that earning 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 that number one spot. Grizzlies at number one. 
So this is our top 10 for probably the next three days. I think we're reordering this list again on Thursday. So what happens today? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we reconvene on Thursday. But this is the top 10 here. We got the Raptors at 10, Heat at 9, Hawks at 8, Timberwolves at 7, 76ers at 6, Mavericks at 5, Bucks at 4, Celtics at 3, Suns at 2, and the Grizzlies, the number one best team in the NBA right now. Shout out to the Grizzlies. Love the Grizzlies. Also, shout out to the Celtics. Love the Celtics. Alrighty, that is uh, not all the NBA we had to go over for today because we got to talk about betting. The third aspect, the games, the rankings, the betting. Yeah, money, money coming in. Yes, folks. So here we go. What do we have on tap today in the NBA? There's a lot of games on today. We got to kind of kick it into high gear a little bit on the show. So let's see if we can go over these betting line spreads a little bit quickly here. So here we go. What do we have on tap? We've got the first game up. Uh, Cavs at the Magic. Magic on the back-to-back, -back, so we stay away from it. Then we get the 76ers at the Pacers. Pacers play last night? They did. Pacers on the back-to-back. -back. We stay away from it. 76ers also on the back-to-back -back as well. Win this game, 76ers. We know when you go back-to-back, -back, it doesn't look so well. Pacers plus 12 and a half. We're not going to be betting this, but I'd be interested in betting that way, the 12 and a half, taking the 12 and a half, because we know the Pacers are somewhat competitive. 76ers on the back-to-back -back may be a little drain, so this is a really good test. The 76ers could lose this game, folks. This is not out of the realm of possibilities. Um, of how the 70 on how really both these teams play we there is a scenario where the 76ers lose so this is a little bit of a good gauge game by the 76ers we won't bet it we'll just watch and talk about it tomorrow all right then we get the rockets at the nets nets minus 18 rockets plus 18 i'm not swallowing any of those points with the nets are you crazy i don't care i don't care uh rockets are on the back to back hang on hang on is there no oh my god there's no nba on tonight there's no NBA on tonight. They fooled me. This is all tomorrow's games. All righty. All righty. Uh, so we got to abandon this. We'll talk about this tomorrow when we can bet all these games because uh, there will be no back-to-back. -back. Nobody's playing tonight. So everybody making way for just March Madness tonight. All right. We get it. All right. I'm kind of glad. It saves us a little bit of time in the show so we can actually maybe get to Malik Willis today and not just talk about it. <laughs> talk about getting to it. Um, all right. So no games today. Good thing I uh, saw that. Good thing I caught that. Okay. So can only bet on March Madness today, tonight, and we are taking Kansas minus four. All right, now that is all we had to talk about here in the NBA. So let's shift gears to the NFL, where before we get into Malik Willis and breaking him down, is he good, is he not good? We've got some stories to talk about in the NFL still. New stories, no more old, outdated stories. Folks, how great is that? Up to the minute stories, so great we cleared our backlog. I'm, like, y'all don't feel how great it felt yesterday's show when we cleared our backlog, and I was able to close out all of those tabs, 40-plus tabs of stories. Man, oh man, it felt so good. So good. Like spring cleaning. Spring sh cleaning on the show. That's really... Is it spring? Is it spring now? I don't know. Do we cross seasons? April? I don't know. Y'all know the seasons. I don't know the seasons like that. But yeah, spring cleaning. I think it's like springtime. So perfect. It's perfect timing, folks. Absolutely perfect timing. But here we go, folks. New stories that just happened either yesterday, after we went live, or today. Here we go. What do we got? Well, folks, the off-season workout programs kick off today. A little bit of uh, the first benchmark of the new season. We've got the off-season workout programs. We've got the draft. Then we go to training camp, OTA. So the first real benchmark for some teams of realizing the new season truly beginning starts today for about four teams. The Bears, Dolphins, Giants, and the Saints begin their off-season workout programs to Today, the teams with the new coaches kind of get a little bit of an extra head start here. And the Bears, Dolphins, Giants, Saints starting their off-season workout programs today. Everybody getting together, working out. <clears throat> Uh, just trying to, you know, uh, get to get each other, start building that kind of foundation y'all love to talk about. Uh, these new teams with new head coaches coming in and kind of, you know, teaching their philosophy, making sure we're all on the same page, asserting their dominance a little bit. Like, hey, you know, this is, you know, I'm a new head, I'm the head coach, I'm the boss around here. I'm kind of setting the regime in place. How does it feel to play under this new head coach? 
What does he talk about? What does he think? What is he? Is he asking for everybody's credentials or is he loosey goosey? Hey, let's just go out there and get it done. So these new coaches establishing themselves, these players getting acclimated to their new head coaches and they're beginning to put in the work necessary to win the ring at the end of the year. So Bears, Dolphins, Giants, Saints begin offseason workout programs today. Then... We got a couple more coming up next week. Uh, do we care? We'll, uh, let's not uh, shout out all these dates. But uh, the the real kind of big big one, big story, if you want to make a big story out of it. Uh, Bengals, they start the latest at May 2nd. I mean, the other teams, the other latest that they start is like April 19th. So Bengals taking a little bit of an extra vacation. Yeah, they got to the Super Bowl, but the Rams, they won, and they're starting April 18th. So why are y'all taking like an extra two weeks out here? What, what is so important that the Bengals are like, yeah, we can take a couple of extra days off. What is that about? We'll see if that bites them in the butt for the season. Probably not, but it's interesting. Uh, so team starting next week, week after that, update up to really kind of April 19th, and then the Bengals, the outlier, starting at May 2nd. But, man, oh, man, I know we just closed out the NFL season, but I know we're all clamoring for it back, and this is kind of the first step, off-season workout programs beginning today. All right, all righty, folks, here we go. New Washington scandal. Once again, we've been kind of keeping up with the story over the last couple of days here, and now this is what we said yesterday. Hey, when you mess with the money, this brings down the downfall. Once again, the sexual harassment in the workplace, you know, that's fine. We can sweep that under the rug. The NFL doesn't care about that. The cheerleader scandal, you know, you know, withholding their passports and bringing them to kind of a foreign country and, uh, you know, being like, hey, you know, do you want to go out with the shareholders a little bit? Do you want to kind of escort these shareholders a little bit? You know, a little bit of that. Not great. The NFL was like, all right, we can, we're can, we cool with that, though. But the money, withholding the money, the 40% of ticket sales for the other team, withholding that money, that's going to be the one that finally brings down Dan Snyder, the owner of the Washington Commanders. Um, and once again, he's gotten a slap on the wrist. We, we talk about it all the time. You know, hey, all right, you've done all these bad things. Well, you know what your punishment is? hiring your wife your wife is going to be kind of co-owners with you that will show you that will teach you right no <laughs> like what is that so we get a quick article right here uh the claim of withheld payments to the league could if proven become the death kneel for dan snyder and once again they've been trying to force him out for a while i mean that's kind of you know the overall uh sentiment when all these scandals break on a yearly basis by the washington football team washington redskins football team commanders it's still the same not great organization to be associated with so it's been going on forever. We always see your dance center needs to be forced to sell the team. And this is another reason on the laundry list of why he needs to be kind of forced out. So let's quickly get in this article. It's very, very quick. It's very, very short. But let's just make sure we are all on the same page here. And there's no like new nugget of information that we can kind of uh, kind of grab onto. So here we go. Quick, quick, quick. Saturday night's bombshell could indeed be the last draw for the NFL and Dan Snyder. AJ Perez and FrontOfficeSports.com reported last night that Congress is exploring whether the Washington Commanders withheld money that should have been surrendered to the league's visiting team pool. As a league source with knowledge of the dynamics among owners told PFT, this would become Snyder's, quote, death kneel, end quote, as an owner if it's proven to be true. Once again, you don't mess with the money. You can do everything besides messing with the money. There also would be an effort to force Snyder to make his payments, whether through the court system or an internal arbitration. Once again, we're getting that money. Not only are we going to be forcing you to sell the team, but we're still coming after that money. You are still responsible for that money. So don't think, okay, I have to sell the team, but I get to keep the money. No, no, we want the money too. The money's coming. <laughs> the money's coming. Uh, the NFL teams don't keep all of their ticket revenue, and they don't directly share any of the money from each given game with the opponent. Instead, 40% of the gate from every game goes into a league-wide pool that goes into equal portions to all teams. Home teams deduct 15% of the total ticket revenue for expenses, making it basically a 66-34% share of the gross and a 60-40 split of the net. 
So if you all know numbers, accounting, there you go. That's the insides. So, if this is true, Snyder got one thirty-second of the 40% payments generated by the other 31 teams, and he failed to pony up all of the 40% chunk that should have gone to his partners. So, yeah, you know, kind of, you know, the owners, the owners are the NFL folks. Once again, uh, Roger Goodell, the commissioner, they work for the, he works for the owners. It goes owner, commissioner, Nothing like us, the fans. That's how it all kind of trickles down. Owners, uh, like owners are the team. So you get the, the team, then you get the commissioner, and then the players, and us, and all that media, whatever. But the owners are at the top, and that's the owners vote. The owners vote on everything, whether you get kicked out, whether you get brought in. It's the owners voting. So if you're screwing over the owners, the owners are the only ones protecting you. You don't mess with the money. Yeah, that's, come on, Dan. That's that's what that's corruption 101. You don't mess with the money. You don't mess with the money because the money will bring you down. Come on. Go back to corruption school. It's that simple, folks. Have you not learned anything from media, from uh, entertainment? Know what you write. So don't tell me, oh, it's television. It doesn't happen. Yeah, you you write what you know. That's, the, that's writing 101. You want to talk about corruption 101? Writing 101 is writing what you know. So, yeah, these kind of corruption stories, shows like Succession, shows like maybe even The Righteous Gemstones. I mean, they know how it works. Yes, not everything detail is, you know, 100% right. And, yes, there's not corruption in every single thing. Uh, maybe I should take that back. Maybe there is. But, um, you know, you write what you know. You write what you know. Okay. All right, back to this. Final two par uh, final paragraph. Here we go. His partners have protected him. Yeah, we just said that. His partners have protected him when it comes to the investigation regarding workplace misconduct because indirectly they are protecting themselves from having similar allegations threaten the hold on their franchise. If it can be proven that he has been picking his partner's pockets, his partners quite likely will be kicking his ass out of the house. So, eh, you don't mess with the money. You don't, uh, you don't mess with the money. That's really all it comes down to. So, Dan Snyder, is this going to be the thing that brings him down? They can prove it. That's kind of what it's looking like. So, man, oh, man, this could be the end of Dan Snyder, but then we still have his wife, and how much does he have control over his wife with? I'm sure they talk. I'm sure she's not uh, unaware of all of what's going on and what he's been doing. I'm sure she knows, folks. But regardless, whether she does, whether she doesn't, is this going to be the end of Dan Snyder? Well, we thought it was two years ago when we were bringing up the scandal of the cheerleaders. And then last year with the whole workplace and all that. And here he still is. So is this his last life? Is this his last ninth life as a cat? We'll see. Dan Snyder messing with the money. Tisk, tisk, tisk. All right. Here we go. Next one up. And uh, we did kind of fly by this one yesterday on the show when we were cleaning out the backlog, but I'm kind of glad I got a second chance to talk about this because uh, I think this is the same story, just with a different headline, uh, but I do kind of want to see what he's saying about him. So I'm glad we get this kind of second chance to talk about it. But here we go. Jets wide receiver Braxton Barrios believes 2022 will see, quote, a different world for quarterback Zach Wilson. And we love Braxton Barrios. He's really kind of uh, like a big name that we saw at the end of the season that we're like, wow, like this could be the answer for the Jets. Once again, we're a little bit in the narrative of all, the whole Debo Samuel thing. Uh, you know, the whole kind of wide out, wide back, whatever you want to call it, wide receiver, running back kind of combo. Uh, Braxton Barrios is a little bit of that. A little bit of a gadget player, great speed on the edge. You get him the ball early and often, and he's making the defense kind of, you know, second guess and try to kind of stay home a little bit more so he doesn't kind of take the top off the defense. So, at the end of the season, I don't know if you remember, but we said, hey, this is what the Jets should focus on. Braxton Barrios, having this kind of be the focal point of the offense. Running the offense through Braxton Barrios, like the 49ers did with Debo Samuel. Running the offense through Debo Samuel. We love Braxton Barrios. So, they ended up re-signing him. We loved it. And now he's kind of talking up Zach Wilson. So, let's see what Braxton Barrios, who we believe in. We're not 100% believing in Zach Wilson quite yet, but we do believe in Braxton Barrios. So, we will hold his words a little bit higher in regards to Zach Wilson. So let's see what he's saying about Zach Wilson. What is he seeing? What is he saying? And what does he think it's going to happen between him and Zach Wilson 
this upcoming season. So let's quickly read some of these quotes here by Braxton Barrios. Here we go. First lead up. It's evidence to Barrios that the New York Jets franchise quarterback is prepared to do anything needed and go anywhere he can to improve his game and the chemistry with his wide receiver. Says, quote, He's willing to do whatever it takes. It's easy to say that, but it's another thing when you take the time out of your off-season training schedule to actually travel to different places. He's doing everything to get everyone on the same page and making a real change next year. That, oh my God, I'm loving it. I think I'm buying into Zach Wilson just off that quote alone. He's traveling places. He's making sure. Zach Wilson's the one making sure everybody's on the same page, getting with the wide receivers, training, going different places, going to them, being like, hey, no, I'll come to you. You don't have to come to me. I'm coming to you. That's great leadership right there. So off of that, yeah, I'm buying it into Zach Wilson. Give me a Zach Wilson jersey right now. Yeah, Jets undefeated. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, final quote. Only two quotes here, so let's see if we can keep it up. But let's see. Final lead up right here. As the new hope to turn around the Jets franchise, Wilson aims to bounce back in 2022, and he's doing what he can to get a head start. Bar uh, Barrios again says, quote, you can tell it's going to be a different animal coming into OTAs than it was obviously when he was thrown into the fire last May with the new playbook in a different terminology. It's going to be di it's going to be a different world for him. So, hey, he's got his foot on the ground here. Got that first season under his belt. Got a little bit more um, confident in the overall system. Learned the terminology. I know, see, saw how the NFL ran things. Once again, that's the biggest adjustment of how the game is ran, how the business is ran from the college side to the NFL side. So that year one is always kind of, you know, a, a big wake up for all these quarterbacks. We rarely see quarterbacks step in year one and have instant success. I think Joe. Joe Burrow was the last quarterback, maybe, until he got injured. And what did he do? He went to Super Bowl year two. So, yeah, maybe we're not expecting Super Bowl for Zach Wilson, but improvement on the win totals last season. What was it, four or five wins? Um, so, you know, Robert Sully, year two head coach, Zach Wilson, year two, Braxton Barrows, overall offense for the most part the same. If Corey Davis is going to kind of buy in and stay here this season and kind of be healthy and be that number one wide receiver, that's going to help out Zach Wilson as well. So, all righty, all righty. I, I, I did not have a high think. I, I was not very uh, placing this Jets team very high in my thinking at the end of last season, but that's a very, very good first quote at the start of this offense season Braxton Barrios believing in Zach Wilson hey you got to have that believability ha got to have that confidence and that leadership factor coming off of Zach Wilson it's looking absolutely great so all right Jets are on our radar now there's a couple of teams not on our radar like the Panthers I don't give a damn about the Panthers they they've got a lot to do to get on our radar but I think the Jets are making their first blip on our radar folks watch out for the Jets all right, next story up here. Here we go. And I don't know what this man's going to say, but we'll see. Peyton Manning advising Russell Wilson on transition to Denver Broncos. And why is Peyton Manning doing that? Because Peyton Manning has done that. He was a Colt, we all know, for his entire career. And then he switches it up and goes to Denver. Like a little bit of a, what a Tom Brady did. And a little bit of what Aaron Rodgers is afraid to do. Aaron Rodgers, why are you afraid? You can win a ring when you go to a new team. Tom Brady did it. It. Aaron, um, Tom Brady did it. Peyton Manning did it. The GOATs did it. Why don't you want to do it? Are you afraid? Are you afraid you're going to get a, a little bit of exposed as the non-GOAT out here because you're not confident in your capabilities of winning a ring with a new team like Peyton Manning, like Tom Brady? Hmm? Hmm. Is Aaron Rodgers a little chicken? Do we got to go instead of Turtle Rodgers, Chicken Rodgers? Huh? We got Chicken Rodgers. We got Turtle Rodgers. We got Riddler Rodgers, folks. He wears many hats. I don't know what you want from me, folks. That's all I'm saying. I'm just seeing what I'm saying, and I'm saying what I'm seeing. Aaron Rodgers is a quarterback in the grace of all time discussion that is not changing new teams to win a ring year one or year five, year four, however long it took Peyton Manning to do it. But he did it regardless, and Rodgers is not taking that risk. Why not? Is he chicken? I don't know. But I think that is a p possibility he's chicken. We'll see. But here we go, back to Peyton Manning. 
And once again, I don't know what Peyton Manning could be telling Russell Wilson because his first three years in Denver, he played absolutely fantastic. I mean, the man threw 5,000 yards in 2013 for Denver. The man threw 68% in back-to-back years for a 13-3 and record. Did he get to the Super Bowl in 2013? 2013, they got to the Super Bowl and lost. Yeah, that's when they got blown out by the Seahawks uh, because the defense, defense wins Super Bowls. Peyton Manning, 5,000 yards, 68% completion percentage, 55 touchdowns, getting to the Super Bowl. Can't win it, put up eight points. Defense wins Super Bowls. Offense gets you there. We know this. So, Peyton Manning, what are you going to tell Russell West, R- Russell Wilson? Hey, if you play great, you won't win a ring? <laughs> I mean, that's going to be your, your advice? He's already won a ring. He's already not won a ring. He knows how to get to the Super Bowl. And it's just so funny, folks. It's so comical looking back at Peyton Manning's stats because in 2015, it's just so abysmal. And that's when they won the Super Bowl. His worst season with the Broncos, they win the Super Bowl. The man threw 59% completion percentage. His worst completion percentage ever since his rookie year. And that's it. He's only thrown 50% completion percentage twice in his career. First season, last season. Um, Every other time, 60 plus. Fantastic. Because he is one of the goats. Uh, But yeah, uh, Peyton Manning. What are you going to tell Russell Wilson? Noodle arm wins rings. Well, Russell Wilson is not that age and not at the age of the noodle arm. (laughs) He's not at the age. Um, And once again, like um, Peyton Manning didn't go out and win the Super Bowl. Let's bring up what Peyton Manning did in the Super Bowl, folks. The man threw nine touchdowns and 17 interceptions that season. Nine touchdowns, 17 interceptions, and won the Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers, are you listening to me? Are you listening, Aaron Rodgers? You've got it wrong. You can have a noodle arm and win a ring. It's not, oh, if I don't throw interceptions, we win the ring. Stop. Get that thought out of your head. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, Aaron. Ah. But this is not an Aaron Rodgers topic. I know we can always point back to Aaron Rodgers because, once again, everybody always does better than Aaron Rodgers in the bigger games. But here we go. Peyton Manning in the Super Bowl. 144 yards, about 50% completion percentage, no touchdown, one interception. That's noodle arm, and it gets the job done because the Broncos had a good defense. They had, like, the number one ranked offense points-wise, not allowing the most points. And that's exactly what they did against the Carolina Panthers in the Super Bowl. Held them to 10 points. So I don't know the whole wisdom that Peyton Manning is trying to pass down to Russell Wilson. We will look at the quotes. But overall, for the most part, Peyton Manning noodle arm, that's what won. That won the Super Bowl. His noodle arm. Not his great years. His 55 touchdown year. That didn't win. Noodle arm won. And now as I see this, you know, we compared... Big Ben's noodle arm to Peyton Manning's the last two seasons. We've said that mm, plethora of times. Uh, But I do want to kind of see this quickly. I want to see Peyton Manning and Big Ben Roethlisberger's noodle arm side by side. Because I don't know if we've ever brought up Big Ben's career stats. Or not his career stats. His overall last season stats. I don't know if we brought those up and just looked at them. I know we tracked them every single week and it was nothing good. But I don't think I saw his complete final season stat line hole. So I want to bring up his and Peyton Manning stats side by side final year. Let's quickly see that because this could be fun. It's going to give us a little nice laugh. Nice little goof. Nice little goof out here to play around with. Yes. Noodle arms last season. Once again, they both had fantastic careers. Multiple Super Bowl winners. Okay, we're not knocking these players and save me with, oh, you're knocking these guys. You're having fun at, fun at their expense. It's a joke, folks. You don't get to slap people all the time. Yes, Will Smith slaps somebody for a joke. That's not acceptable. <laughs> you can't be slapping people because of comedy, folks, okay? Uh, because it's at your wife's expense or at your expense. It's it's comedy. It's always at somebody's expense. It's, it's unfortunate. That's a little bit of a social con contract that we all just kind of enter into uh you know if you get made fun of it's unfortunate it's unfortunate you laugh at it you can laugh at your own self it's okay to laugh at your own self folks it's all right 
Especially when you're putting yourself out there, but that's a conversation for a different day. Here we go. Ben Roethlisberger's noodle arm stats. He even threw 64%. Man, oh man, 3,700 3, yards, 22 touchdowns, only 10 interceptions. Pay Manning's out here throwing 17 interceptions and winning a Super Bowl. I mean, that truly puts it into perspective of how much of a noodle arm Peyton Manning had. Big Ben still was able to muster up 64% completion percentage for 3,700 yards. Peyton Manning, 59% completion percentage. It's absolutely abysmal, folks. So, Pay Manning, what do you got? What do you got for Russell Wilson? What do you got to say? What is your big time advice? Wait till your very last season when you have a noodle arm and you rely on your defense? Is that what you're going to say? Let's quickly take a look. Here we go. First, lead up to the quote, Manning played the final four seasons of his career in Denver after spending 14 years with the Indianapolis Colts. While the circumstances behind joining the Broncos were different for Manning, who underwent neck surgery in 2011 and missed that whole season, his perspective can help Wilson's transition to the new team mid-career, says, quote, <clears throat> I've talked to Russell a number of times, and we've had conversations about some of the things that helped me in my transition to a different team that I think can apply to anybody making the jump, especially after being in a place for a long time. I've had conversations with Coach Nathaniel Hackett as well about some of those things, maybe some do's and don'ts that help me and can certainly apply, and Russell can hit the ground running here in his first year. All right, so Payne Pay Manning giving advice to the quarterback, Russell Wilson, that had Coach Nathaniel Hackett. Now, is Payne Manning sabotaging? He owes no alliance to the Denver Broncos. He's, he's a cult. He's a cult. Just like Tom Brady's will always be a Patriot. Tom Brady will never kind of feel like he needs to go out and defend the Bucs over the Patriots unless you're going to probably count maybe a little bit of a feud over Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Or maybe not wanting to give more credit to Bill Belichick so he praises the Bucs a little bit more. But overall, Peyton Manning is a cult. He, he owes nothing to this Broncos team. So, is he sabotaging him a little bit? I, I, I think it's fun to speculate on. I doubt he's doing that, but I think that is a possibility to be done. A little bit of a, hey, you know, Peyton Manning, you know, he, you know, all these people, all these quarterbacks, all these celebrities, all these famous people, they know that they need to keep up their image. They don't want to keep going down in the power rankings and the grace of all time arguments. That's why Aaron Rodgers struggles in the big game because he knows reputation is at stake in all those big games and he always flounders he can't handle the pressure because he knows he all this is going to be talked about for the next 20 years obviously forever but the next 20 years when we're talking about goats and all that he knows what's happening right now is having big time impact on it obviously so is Peyton Manning throwing a little bit of uh, hey hey don't uh actually do this this will this will work if you throw 17 interceptions see I did it throw 17 interceptions let it fly Russell play loosey goosey let it fly don't hold anything back and Russell Wilson's buying that and be like oh thank you Peyton thank you so much thank you for the advice and he goes out there and throws 20 interceptions and doesn't win a ring and then he's asking him Peyton Peyton Manning hey what what happened. What was that advice you gave me? Oh, shucks. It just didn't work out this time. But double down. Throw 40 interceptions next season. And Russell Wilson, he's smarter than this. He won't He won't buy into it. But if he does, all right, Peyton Manning, I'll take your advice. He throws 40 interceptions. Once again, they have like four wins, something maybe. So is Peyton Manning sabotaging? Probably not. Probably not. But maybe. <laughs> Potentially. 1% maybe, yes. Um, all right, what else you got? All right, final quote here by Peyton Manning. Final lead up. Here we go. Manning noted he probably doesn't, quote, have enough time to go through all the things that are special about Russell Wilson's game, quote, end quote, but said the leadership is what stands out about the new Broncos quarterback. Uh, here we go, quote, just his leadership and his work ethic. Once again, we saw him working out in the dark already with Jerry Judy. You couldn't wait till the morning? I mean, geez louise. Uh, quote, just his leadership and his work ethic. You start there and then you obviously get to the abilities and talent on the field. His ability to scramble out of the pocket and also make every throw from within the pocket. That's something that is unique. And then the fact that he's going to work very hard to get to his timing down with his receivers. Yeah, he was already doing that with Jerry Judy. So, all right, Peyton Manning giving his two cents to Russell Wilson, who doesn't need it, eh, but, you know, he does it anyway. Peyton Manning wanting to kind of, you know, always be in the media. That's how you keep up your status. Absolutely, that's two things you do. Stay in the media, stay relevant. Peyton Manning's trying to do that, which we don't knock. That's the game. He's playing the game. I don't care. Uh, so, Peyton Manning, 
Giving some advice to Russell Wilson, he doesn't need it. Giving some advice to uh, Nathaniel Hackett, yeah, he could definitely use some advice. First time as co head coach. So Peyton Manning, you know, doing a little bit of uh, mentorship. All right. All right. Is he the best mentor? He's a great talent. I don't know if Russell Wilson needs it, but interesting what Peyton Manning's doing out here. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's go into this. Uh, another kind of, you know, second chance to read this story. Once again, we probably should have went deeper into this yesterday when we were just quickly emptying out the story bank. But I do want to kind of read this as well. Once again, here's the headline. Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett communicates, quote, nonstop with Russell Wilson, saying, quote, we're joined at the hip. And I want to get his words. I want to make sure these words are on the record so we can always pull back from these words and keep these words in our mind. I want to see what the relationship is here early from Nathaniel Hackett. I want to hear from the man. So let's quickly read uh, these quotes here. You got about three or four quotes. So let's see how their communication actually is. Now, this is from a few days ago. We got March 27th. So about a week ago, two weeks ago. But overall, you know, we can still rely on what they're saying here. So here we go. What is Nathaniel Hackett saying about Russell Wilson? First, lead up to the quote. The Broncos had been in search of a quarterback for years. Russell Wilson was looking for a new NFL home for at least a year. That explains the pure joy emanating out of Denver in the aftermath of their alliance. Quote here by Nathaniel Hackett. A little scream is how Nathaniel Hackett described his real-time reaction to the Russell Wilson trade. A little scream. I love it. Ah! <laughs> Could you imagine you picking up your phone, reading the test, text, hey, we got Russell Wilson. Ah! <laughs> That's your first reaction. Ah! <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right. Little scream. Quote, it was one of those somewhat high it was one of the, it was one of those somewhat high pitched but still wanted to be kind of manly screams exactly what we were picturing fantastic uh when you get a great player like that to be able to be around him and to get to know him as i have now it's exciting so okay i'm definitely glad we went back to the story and are reading these quotes because that's how quarterback head coach relationship should be you should be screaming and you screw the masculinity scream Ah! Hey! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> like, all right, make it as feminine as you want. Who cares? You got Russell Wilson. Get excited. Get pumped. Screw the masculinity. Ah! Come on. No, don't care. Don't care about the, Oh, I want to see masculine, but also not. Nah, nah, nah. Go go full blown, whatever you need to do. All right? Eee! Woo! <laughs> ah! It's okay. It's all right, Nathan. You'll have fun with it. So, all right, I'm loving this, folks. Nathaniel Hackett loving Russell Wilson out here. You need to have that head coach quarterback um, relationship like this. It's got to be solid. Look at Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay. Sean McVay gushes. I don't know if Sean McVay screams like Nathaniel Hackett does, but he gushes. We know um, Sean McVay gushes actively like gushes 24-7 over Matthew Stafford. This is what you have to have. You have to have this relationship because that's kind of the two most important things that make teams work the quarterback who's handling the ball every single play in the head coach who runs the team every day every minute so we need those two pieces the two guys at those positions to be 100% comfortable with each other believe in each other respect each other head coach should take into consideration everything that the quarterback says hey these are my feelings on it and it should always be kind of an open form, an open discussion, an open door to the office, always. So we're going to definitely have that here in Denver, and I'm loving that, absolutely. What else do we get here? Next lead up, here we go. From a personality standpoint, Hackett and Wilson might have more in common as eternal Optimus, the first year coach, said he and his new star pupil have been texting each other nonstop, says, quote, we're just trying to get to e get to know each other. He's very, very excited as I am too. Yeah, we knew that by the scream. Uh, he's very, very excited as I am too. And I think for both of us, for any coach, you want a guy that's fired up, that wants ownership, that wants to go out there and not skip a beat. Absolutely. 
He wants to represent the Broncos and himself, the coaches, everybody. And that's the passion that you're hunting. And I think that's what R- Russell brings every single day. And it is every single day and every minute of the day. Now the good thing is, I don't know how many people he's been around like me. So we're always kind of battling with each other to see who can push the other. We're joined at the hip now, and I love being on his hip. Yeah. All right. All right, final quote. Here we go. Last lead up. Hackett said he's been on Wilson's recent film. It's an important study to give his uneven play over the past two seasons with the Seahawks. Once again, a little bit of a recertification. Uneven play, recertifying this season. I don't think I'm out of the realm. I don't think I'm out of my gourd for putting Russell Wilson back on the lift, in the shop, and making sure this man's good. So once again, I've got no problem with having Russell Wilson go up for recertification this season. Back to the lead-up. Here we go. Of course, that stretch also involved a pair of Pro Bowl nods and a fair share of clutch performances. Once again, it's not a big recertification. It's just, hey, just making sure. Once again, exactly what we've already said. Hackett sees one one thing in particular that he must unlock from the 33-year-old quarterback. Says, quote, I just think the consistency. And even when we say that, we say that with peak Russ. And that's exactly it. See, then that, I'm loving Nathaniel Hackett. Okay, folks? Is he my new favorite head coach? Sean McVay currently is my favorite head coach. But everything I'm hearing from Nathaniel Hackett, okay, he's making a run, folks. He's making a run for my favorite head coach. The man gets it. When we say about consistency, with Russell Wilson, it's not the same consistency we're talking about with Sam Darnold. Of course it's not. They're totally different players. We've already established that. We've been established that. So when we say consistency for Russell Wilson, it's consistency on his standard. Back to the quote, and even when we say that, we say that with, quote, peak Russ. We know this. We just, we're talking consistency on his level, not consistency on whatever baseline you're assuming, any garbage quarterback you're assuming. No, it's all, it's not binary, folks. That's the biggest thing to take away from the show. Nothing is ever binary. It's either this or this. It's nuance. It's this mixed with this mixed with that, this and that. You take this and that, you mix it with this, this and that that then you take the mix of this and that and this this and this and that and then you mix it with the mix of that this that this 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 that 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 so you take all those mixes then you put them together to try to get something coherent folks yes that's the nuance i'm loving nathaniel hackett this man is nuanced this man gets it the man gets it folks i love it Woo! i'm so glad we went back to this story oh so glad Woof! Let's continue on, because that's not even the end of the quote here. Here we go. Quote, and even when we say that, we say that with... We say what that, quote, peak Russ is, what Russ does compared to other people. He's spectacular. And we might say he should have more stats. He should be at this level. Even a bad day for Russ is really a good day for a lot of people. So I think it's about consistency. I think, love it. Thank you for saying that. Love it. Final quote here. Quote, it's about him establishing himself as one of the best in the league, which he is all which he already is, and just continually doing that over and over in each game. Anytime you have a guy like that, you're always going to have a chance to win too. We just want to be sure that we're doing all the stuff right. We just want to make sure we're doing all the stuff right. Love everything so far. Nathaniel Hackett, Russell Wilson, loving, loving, loving this pair, quarterback, head coach, combination, combo together. This is definitely going to work out, folks. Cannot wait for the new season to start just so we can watch Russell Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett get it done for the Broncos in a whew, a tough-ass AFC division that has quarterback after quarterback after quarterback. Quarterback after quarterback after quarterback after quarterback after quarterback. They're deep at the quarterback position, folks. We know this. So, woo man, Nathaniel Hackett. And what did we say, folks? What did we say earlier? Nathaniel Hackett, the right choice, offensive, innovative genius, run and pass, perfect balance, and the man gets it. We've got to add to our list right here. Got the right guy for 2022. All the head coaches, new head coaches this season. We broke them down our first kind of instincts. Do we like it? Do we like it? Uh, do we not like it? Do we love it? Do we hate it and all that? And Nathaniel Hackett, we've loved it, but we love it even more. And I'm adding this to... Um, 
our notes here on Nathaniel Hackett and the Broncos. The man gets it. The man gets it, folks. And if you can get it, you get it. You get it or you don't. That's really all there is. Do you get it or you don't? And the man gets it, folks. Watch out for the Broncos. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. Ooh, damn, why, why we, actually, why do we have to read that? Because now I have to wait, what, six months? We got to wait six, five months for the NFL to start? Oh, it's got to start now. Damn, I'm loving the Broncos. I'm loving the Broncos, folks. Woof. All righty, folks. Woof. I'm loving the Broncos. Man, oh, man. <clears throat> Alrighty, but in classic takes by fans fashion, we went late and we cannot fit in a segment. So I apologize, but we cannot get to Malik Willis today, folks. We will try again tomorrow. It's going to be tough tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, but uh, we will try to get that done tomorrow. We've got to get some prospects. We can't have a draft show and not know any of the draft prospects. We're like, who's this guy? Y'all heard of this guy? All right, uh, maybe we'll have to do that, but mm, I don't want to, but we'll see. We got to get to some draft prospects, so we'll try to get to Malik Willis as soon as possible. But first day of clearing out the backlog, backlog's done. Got a little bit carried away with the March Madness, threw a little extra minutes in our plan and all that, but those stories were great. We're loving the Jets. Uh, not love you. Okay, let me bring that in. I'm loving the Broncos. I'm, uh, I'm getting there on the Jets. They're on our radar. They're on our radar, first step. All right, but we're back live tomorrow, noon Eastern, trying to do it all over again. We'll break down March Madness, the winner. We'll see who wins. Uh, we'll break down the NBA from last. Oh, no, no NBA last night. Yeah, so we, oh, yeah, Malik Willis is definitely tomorrow, folks. We don't have to talk about NBA tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we're cleared, folks. We are cleared for Malik Willis. That is probably all we'll do tomorrow. We'll just watch Malik Willis. We will make that man the forefront. All righty, now we've got a plan. Everything is looking bright, folks. Everything is looking bright for Malik Willis tomorrow. All right. All righty, folks. Sounds good. Yeah, sound good? Sound good? Yeah, it does. All right. Back live tomorrow noon Eastern. Malik Willis, we're watching you. Are you good? Are you good, my man? All the hype? Hype going around about you? You worth it? You living up to it? We find out tomorrow, folks. All righty. Have an absolute great one. We will see you tomorrow. And uh, bet on the final finals tonight? Nah. Kansas minus four. That's our pick. All righty, folks. We are out of here. Have a great one. And we see you tomorrow.